from network engineering to DevOps. This is my career story, and I've been asked to share this by a number of folks, especially those who uh, are coming from a network engineering background. Uh, I've been asked quite a bit, how did you transition from a network engineer to the DevOps space? So I decided to share my journey here with you and give some pointers along the way as to uh, how you can transition as well if that's what you're looking to do. Uh, of course, every story is different, every career path is different, but maybe you can pick up uh, on some of the themes in my own story. So let's get started. So I was a typ typical network engineer. I started at a Canadian uh, internet provider. Um, I was in multiple departments. I spent about seven years there. I was in the technology department for a bit, uh, in the engineering planning uh, department, uh, did some implementation work, and also was in operations. My technology stack um, included your typical routing and switching. Uh, I had my Cisco CCNA. I had uh, transitioned actually more towards Juniper certification. I had my JNCIS, JNCIP, um, typical routing protocols that you'd recognize, OSPF, ISI, ISIS, BGP, um, MPLS, VPN, firewalls, uh, ASAs, SRX, checkpoint, you know, your typical network engineering stack. I was, I was there. I learned it all and, uh, and was working in that field. And, and then I felt after those seven years that, you know, there's still something I'm looking for something missing. And this is where I started to think of transitioning into a role within a vendor. Uh, so uh, a networking vendor. So wanted to work directly with customers. I felt, you know, I want to understand what customers are looking for, what struggles they have, what challenges, how I can help, that kind of a thing. Plus the fact that I desire to still be technical and um, I was looking to gain a higher salary as well. And really what that equaled was uh, a sales engineering role. That kind of fit the, exactly what I was looking for. And I landed a job as an SC at a great company called Extra Hop Networks and um, had a great time learning. However, there was definitely quite a bit of challenges transitioning into this role, not from a technical point of view, but mostly from a business and sales point of view. I definitely grew quite a bit. I learned quite a lot and uh, it was an amazing experience um, there. Then what happened is um, from network, from networking to DevOps, I wanted to uh, now kind of understand a little bit more of, um, of what's going on at the application layer. So networking, uh, is very important and uh, no offense to anybody here, but it is at the end of the day uh, plumbing, really. It's delivering applications from one side to another, delivering packets from one side to another, from the user to a server and back and forth. And I had a manager uh, at um, one of my companies who mentioned that, you know, the network is there to serve the application. And for you to understand exactly what's going on, you need to also understand what the network is serving. So you need to go to the application layer and understand what's going on. So really that's what I decided to do. I wanted to move up the stack to the application layer and understand what the development life cycle looks like. Uh, for me, developers were those, you know, kids with hoodies that were just typing away on a computer, writing some code and uh, have no idea what's going on and and you know i'm just serving the application's needs i don't know what's going on uh, what the application does what kind of problem it solves for a customer so those are the things that i really wanted to understand and then came a technology that kind of was revolutionizing the whole industry and it was docker and um i didn't know what docker was until someone delivered a talk at a meetup, um, actually it's, it was a meetup for, for network engineers, believe it or not. And uh, the person there was talking about Docker and how it's going to change everything, the difference between containers and VMs. And that really, really grabbed my attention. 
Uh, that was back in 2014. Docker had just started or, or began in 2013. So it's very early on. And right away, I grabbed my uh, home lab, downloaded uh, Docker and tried to fiddle around, understand what it was. And I was really fascinated by, uh, by what it was, what it's doing. And at the time, um, a friend of mine mentioned, Hey, why don't you look at uh, Docker and, and, and just join the company, right? At the time, it wasn't the perfect time. We were expecting our second child and so on. So it wasn't really the perfect time. But six months later, I did decide to move and, uh, and join Docker. And it was uh, an amazing experience. I, I was really excited to be part of Docker and understand this whole new space, understand DevOps, uh, and containers and containerization and Kubernetes. Um, however, it was, it was definitely challenging. This time, not from a business and sales perspective, because it was a very similar role. It was a pre-sales engineering role at Docker. But, uh, the, the challenge was more on the technical side, understanding this new technology, how to transition into this space from a networking, um, background. So what did I do to transition into DevOps? And here are some of the things I did. And again, you can, uh, take some of these uh, things that I did and, and do do them yourself if you want. Uh, first thing, I picked up a hands-on course, and I really want to stress the fact of hands-on. You don't want to just grab a course that teaches you theory and then you forget everything in a month or so. Uh, you need to continue to do hands-on labs and and work and get things uh, done in front of you so to solidify the concepts in your mind. So I grabbed a course by Brett Fisher called Docker Mastery. Excellent course, recommend it if you're uh, new to Docker. And that really set the stage for me to understand what Docker is about. And of course, I, uh, as I mentioned, I repurposed my home lab. I had a, a secondhand Dell T5500 server in my basement that I was using at the time when I was with ExtraHop. Uh, so I repurposed it uh, to have uh, some VMs running Docker and just playing around with Docker, Docker Swarm, and uh, all the Docker technologies that I can uh, understand and learn, Kubernetes and so on. And then I learned Git, which is super important. And every project that I start now, I have to create a, a repo for. It's not enough for me. Like I don't build a, I don't create a uh, folder on my computer until I create a repo in GitHub first or GitLab, and then I can clone that and then I can develop on my computer and start working with that. So that was a big shift for me. The idea of everything is version controlled. Uh, and this is very important. I run in this, into this quite a lot with customers trying to uh, teach them to uh, make sure that everything is in Git. Everything is version controlled. You don't want to move files around and move uh, folders around. I see this quite a bit. Shared folders in in on shared network drives, and uh, somebody changes something somewhere. It's not reflected in the other folder somewhere else. It's 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 a mess, right? So I learned this early on, and I highly recommend if you're starting your journey, make sure you learn Git and really the basics around Git. You don't want to get into the details uh, of Git. Just get started. Uh, know how to fork a repo, how to clone a repo, how to um, write a git ignore file and, and so on and so forth. Uh, then I took a Kubernetes course by Nigel Poulton. Uh, amazing course as well. Understood the basics of Kubernetes, the, the why behind Kubernetes, the whole idea of orchestrating containers. Um, and then continued again, getting my hands dirty every day in my lab. Highly, highly recommend you, you do that. And then I started delivering tutorials and workshops as part of my day-to-day -day job at Docker. And again, that continued to help me understand more and more the technology because when you teach, you learn as well. And then I had the opportunities to see where customers are at uh, in their app modernization efforts. Uh, once again, understanding where different customers are at, helping them along, uh, that, that definitely continued to help me in my uh, DevOps journey. Uh, then the journey continues and now I transition to a pre-sales engineering role at Sysdig. And at, in this role, I learned more about monitoring and securing Kubernetes. Um, then after that, I moved to HashiCorp. And at HashiCorp, I learned the HashiCorp stack. Of course, Packer, Terraform, Vault, Console, Nomad, Boundary, Waypoint. 
uh, Sentinel. But more importantly than the tools uh, that I learned is the why behind them uh, and the need for these tools because tools are going to continue to pop up. You're going to get all kinds of alternatives to, to some tools. Like what's the point of these tools? That's really what you want to dig into. Uh, why do we need this particular tool rather than how to use it? How to use it, you'll pick up no problem, but understand why a developer or uh, DevOps engineer might need this tool. All right, what am I doing today? So one thing I learned and I wish I had done more of and more of consistently is teaching everything I learned. Um, few people share the knowledge that uh, that they learn and that could be for many reasons, time obviously being one of the big ones. But when you teach, you learn better as I mentioned before and it solidifies concepts in your mind. So what I'm doing is I'm building an academy right now focusing on DevOps. I call it Tech and Aid Academy. You probably have seen some of my videos on that. And I'm also transitioning into platform engineering. I'm buying into the idea of we put too much on the developer's plates. Let's have uh, a platform engineering team uh, that actually builds an internal developer platform to help developers uh, not have to context switch all the time. And instead of developers having to learn Kubernetes and Terraform and uh, infrastructure as code and Docker and so on, uh, of course, they'll probably need Docker, uh, but they don't have to need, know a, lot, a whole lot about the infrastructure where they're developing. They just um, request an environment. And then from there, they can continue developing in Python and Golang and, uh, and do their testing in this environment and so on. So we shift the uh, the focus from them having to learn a lot of infrastructure as code technologies uh, or infrastructure technologies to more focusing on the features that they're building with the programming languages that they're comfortable with. So that's kind of where, where I'm, uh, you know, taking the academy next, more focus on platform engineering. But of course, still, we have to uh, learn the DevOps concepts behind all of this. I'm also spending some time consulting because I want to still be close to customers, understand their challenges, their needs. And uh, and that's always very important. As I mentioned before, I always want to be close to the customer and understand their needs. So what are some takeaways for you that you can um, do today? And the first one is your career is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So take your time. Uh, early on when I was finishing off my master's, we had a... VP from Bell come and visit us and basically it was a recruiting event for uh, for co-op and uh, something stuck with me that he said. He said, uh, a lot of new grads try to live their entire career in 24 months. Uh, so the reality is, again, it's a marathon. Take your time and learn and spend time understanding the concepts very well. Don't just rush and try to move on to the next thing. Take your time. Uh, the second thing is get get your hands on practice. Build a lab. Build a GitHub presence. Make sure you have that. That is really the new resume, honestly. Like that's that's what uh, employers will ask for. Uh, some folks ask uh, to work for me, and and sometimes I, I have some projects. The first thing I ask is where's your GitHub um, uh, profile? Send me that. I want to see what you, what you've built. Um, and, and again, you can build some projects that are just for you to learn. That's completely fine. But have some sort of a profile, GitHub, GitLab, that you can show to future employers. Uh, keep learning and don't be afraid to get uncomfortable. And that's really where the magic happens. Every time I chose to get out of my comfort zone to try something new, when I transitioned into uh, a pre-sales role, uh, that was very uncomfortable. And that took me... I don't know, six months to a year to get more and more comfortable with what I'm doing. So, but once that happened, it opened new opportunities for me and uh, it was amazing. Same thing happened when I tra transitioned into DevOps. You know, it was very uncomfortable. I, I knew my OSPF, I knew my uh, BGP, but I didn't know anything about Docker. I didn't know Kubernetes, you know, so that was uncomfortable, but again, opened incredible opportunities. So don't be afraid of getting uncomfortable. Don't be afraid of coding. That comes up quite a lot from sysadmins, from network engineers. Um, 
the reality is you're writing configuration all the time. You're writing configuration, whether that's on a Cisco router, whether that's a Linux script, you know, it's not that far off um, learning to code. And we're not asking you to become a full stack developer, uh, but you need to understand concepts, you need to understand um, not necessarily the syntax. The syntax can, you know, can be learned. You can Google it or use ChatGPT. That doesn't matter. What matters is the concepts, understanding, oh, I might need an if statement. I might need a for loop, something like that. The actual syntax really doesn't matter. Uh, networking, back, uh, networking background works in your favor. Uh, don't be afraid. Be actually, this, this is something that works in your favor and this is an advantage that you have. Uh, you'll have a better time understanding service meshes, Kubernetes networking. Networking is everywhere, so don't worry. Your background, it doesn't go to waste. It will definitely serve you very, very well. And then finally, document your learnings. Everything you learn, make sure you document it in some way or another. Again, in a GitHub repo for sure, but better yet, create a YouTube channel and share it with the world. Share what you know. Um, that will help you and definitely help others. So what about you? Tell me about your journey. I'm really interested and would love to hear what you think. And uh, if you have any advice that you would like to share, share with me or share with others watching this video, please do so. Please comment in the comment section and let everybody know what you think and where you're at and what your aspirations are. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and uh, be happy to uh, help you along and uh, learn about your journey. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in another video.